Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, I won't be long. I preach short. So uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Genesis. Chapter 2. Phil, as I saw you walking, the Lord's just been talking to me about you. As you were walking there, the Lord says, tell Phil he's walking into some new glory. He's walking into some new glory, especially in your music. Hmm, get ready. Okay, Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, now that tree is a, is a very, those two trees, there was a dichotomy between the two trees. One brought life and one brought death. Adam and Eve were told not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because, you know, they already were like God. They didn't have to eat of something to get like God. A lot of us today, we think we got to do this or we got to do that. And if we do this or that, we're going to be more like God. We're already like God. We just got to grab a hold of what God has given us and act upon it and believe upon it. And here, you know, they let Satan beguile them into eating of what they shouldn't have eaten of. And then the, the tree of life was there. And it says that those trees were in the midst of the garden. Right there in the midst of the garden. I don't know whether that was the center of the garden or where it was, but the... the the midst right there in Hebrew means suspended. So those two trees were suspended. They were rooted in heaven. They were heavenly trees, a heavenly commodity, not to be touched by man. Oh, they could be looked upon, they could be held, but not to be eaten or touched. And that tree that was suspended from heaven, those trees had the very root of heaven within them. The life of heaven was permeating through those trees. And today, you know, you can, you can eat of many things. You can eat of the world or you can eat of the gospel. It's whatever you take. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, didn't he? I am. So if we realize that Jesus is the very bread of life, and remember when he told the disciples, you have to eat of me, you have to drink my blood, and the Bible says that was such a hard saying that most of them departed at that time because they didn't understand what he was saying. You know, the, the Bible says that the life is in the blood. Our life is in the blood, the very life of us. I remember many years ago when I became so ill and my blood count was down to a four, and that's not much blood, uh, the, the life of me was draining out of me because I had no blood. And then when they gave me blood transfusions, that my life started coming back into me. Our life is in the blood. So they, they were given this assignment not to eat of that. And you know the story they did in chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said? Many times the devil will talk to us and say, Hath God said? But he'll always twist it. It's never the right way, the statement. He, he twists God's word to make us believe something that God didn't say said to us. So you have to know that Satan is a twister. He's a deceiver. He's a very liar. He'll lie to you. He'll rob from you. He'll take things from you that your God has given you. And they'll slip from your hands. And all of a sudden, they're gone. And you didn't even realize how it had gone. It's just gone. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the, the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst, the one that was from the ones that are from heaven, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now God didn't say touch, he just said eat of it. And she added that. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. So we have to know whatever he tells us is directly against God's word. If you ever get the thought, oh, this is never going to happen for me, 
God will do it for somebody else, but not me. God loves somebody else, but he doesn't love me. Have you ever had that thought? Why does God bless that person and doesn't bless me? Well, God loves you much as he loves anybody else. He loves you. But when a child of God gets a hold of the word of God and learns how to operate in that word, learns how to stretch their faith to believe for miracles, to believe for healings, to believe for the manifestations in their life of what God has given them, that child is quick to get in the blessings. See, there's a difference. We can have a little faith or we can have no faith or we can have great faith. He told the Syrophoenician woman, Woman, you're fa you have great faith. Centurion had great faith. Not seen such great faith. Don't you want God to look at you and say, you have great faith. Stepping out in faith is not an easy thing to do. Stepping out. It's, it's one step at a time. Sometimes we, we, we want to prophesy or we want to see miracles. We want to see the healing. But we're not willing to take the first step. God says, if you take the first step, I'll, f I'll, I'll go ahead of you and I'll prepare the way for you and I'll open those doors. But you've got to take the step. I never know anybody that didn't get a hold of the word of God and get a miracle unless they've taken the first step. It's a baby step. Have you ever had your child? When, when Melissa was little, she was, she was very sickly at first and I didn't think she was ever going to walk. She weighed 10 pounds at 10 months old. Can you imagine that? She had celiac disease, and no doctor would, could find out what she had. And then when we found out, she started getting well again. And that was before I was really serving the Lord that I am now. Didn't know what to do. And every time she would get sick, it's like she would get so sick. I remember we had been to a Kenneth Copeland meeting, and we had never heard faith preached. We had a wonderful pastor, but he preached salvation all the time. And salvation is wonderful because everything starts with salvation, and you need that. But he never really preached faith. I didn't know about faith. I didn't know that if God told me to do something, I had to do it. If he said not to do it, I, didn't, I shouldn't do it. And we heard the word of faith preached, and it was the first time I came home, and my dear sister said, Melissa's so sick, she has a burning fever. You better get her to the hospital. And that was before cell phones. And I remember I walked into the bedroom where she was sick, and I felt her head, and she was so hot. And all I said is, I stretched my faith out in the name of Jesus, fever go, and immediately left her. And I said, whoa, <laughs> wow, this faith stuff works. <laughs> and I found out faith works. But it, it, it's up to me to work the faith. See, if, if I'm not willing to dig in and to start believing God for what he has for me, it's not going to work for me. The same God that Kenneth Copeland had is my God too. The way Kenneth Copeland built his faith up was believing the word of God, confessing the word of God. So here, here she allowed the serpent to beguile her into eating what she shouldn't have done, doing what she shouldn't have done. And the Bible says her husband was with her. That tree was rooted in heaven. That was a heavenly tree that she should not have eaten of. See, there's things that God has told us not to do because it will destroy our faith. If you get in sin, your faith is going to be destroyed. You get in, in, in gossip, your faith won't work the way it should. God is always wanting us to have our faith upon faith upon faith multiplying, building up in our life to see things that other people can't see because we stretch forth our faith. So they, they lost what God had planned for them. God had given Adam dominion. He had crowned him with glory. He had given him the very faith and presence of God in his life. And now all of a sudden he was cast out of the garden and earth didn't respond to him the way it did before. Earth no longer responded to him. See, we can find out that things don't respond to us the way it did when we stretched our faith out. Some of you, when you were first born again, you were full of faith, full of power. You could, you could be like Superman and go into a telephone booth and come out and have faith man on you. You were that full of faith. But then you serve the Lord for a while and the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things come your way and they rob the word. They choke the word out. Death can come your way and choke the word. Uh, family relationships, marriages, children, teenagers can come your way and it starts choking the word out.
and you get to the place where the enemy is speaking to you, did God say? Did God say? Did God say? You've got to get to the place where your faith is so strong that when he speaks to you, you can say, my God did say. My God said. And you stretch your faith and you start believing and acting upon what his word says that you can have. In um, Revelation chapter 2, now these two trees, today, every day, we can eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or we can eat of the tree of life. I want to be eating of the tree of life. I want to live in that victory life, don't you? You can live in defeat. See, it's, you get up in the morning. What are you going to do when you get up? Just get up. When you get up, you better go to your place of prayer. You better go to that place. If, if, nobody, if somebody gets up and they can't find me, they know where I am. I'm in that place of prayer. I'm in that place where I meet with my God. The verse 7 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches, unto you too. What is the Spirit saying unto you continually? What, it, what is, is, is he speaking to you in your heart? So many of you, God has placed things in your heart and the Spirit has spoke to you. Oh, to do this, to go there, to say this, not to do that, not to do this, but to do that. And the Spirit's speaking to you continually about some things and you've ignored them. You can't ignore that. You've got to get a hold of. The Spirit says to the churches, to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Wow. He will give me to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. In John chapter 1, we, we see where Jesus here says in verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And see, if you, you stretch your faith, you behold Jesus. You don't stretch your faith, you can't behold Jesus. I want to eat of that tree of life. I want that tree in the midst of my life that I can eat of that victory every day. But I've got to behold Jesus. I've got to see him. You look to the world and you start seeing the world. You look to your problems and you start seeing your problems. But if I can see Jesus, I've got to keep him in my midst. I've got to keep him high and lifted up above every care of this world. That's what I've got to do. I've got to see Jesus. And he says, and the word was made flesh and he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So if I can behold his glory, I know that he's for me. I know that I have the very faith of God operating in me, that I can be an overcomer in this life. You want the glory? Well, it's a stretch of faith to get the glory. You want that? You've got to stretch your faith. If you don't want the glory, it's not going to happen to you. You've got to get the glory. You've got to be a glory rider. You've got to be a glory talker. You've got to bask in his glory. And the glory is his manifested presence. We beheld his glory. We beheld his glory, full of grace, full of truth. That's his glory. In the book of Hebrews... Now, talking about the glory, talking about what we can have, it says in Hebrews uh, 2, verse 6, But once in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou would visit him? This was quoted, I quoted it this morning in Psalms 8. That thou made him a little lower than the angels, that's a little lower than God, Elohim, and crowned him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hands. So I have to know, as I stretch my, for my, forth my faith, I can take a hold of that, that he has crowned me with glory and honor. He has put me over the works of his hands. I can know that. If I stretch my faith, if I know who Jesus is, if I know him, but I've got to know him. I've got to know what it's like in his word. I've got to behold the word. I've got to get the word in my heart and believe the word is for me. And then I can stretch my faith and I can act upon God's word. So many times we don't act upon God's word. We, we let it slip by. And we live an ordinary life, a, a mundane life not filled how God wants us to be. Like I said before, God never wanted heaven separated from earth. Jesus came to show us what heaven is like. 
It says in verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than God for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom all things and by whom all things is bringing many sons unto glory. So he's brought you unto glory. By your faith, you receive that glory, and you know you have been brought into that glory. You want to go deeper? You can go deeper. You want to stay where you are? You can stay where you are. But the Bible says if I can go from glory to glory, why do I want to stay here? Why do I want to get stagnant? Have you ever seen water that gets stagnant? It gets green and it gets yucky. What is a person like that once knew the glory and now they don't know the glory anymore? What is that like? It's like shaking somebody's hand like a fish. Have you ever shook somebody's hand and it's like a fish? Once you knew the glory, he doesn't want you to stop. He wants you to stretch your faith and go from glory to glory. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that manifested presence of him, but it's knowing him. He, he paid the price for us. He did it for us. For it became him for whom all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they also who are sanctified are all of one. So he's given us his same glory, his same power that he walked in upon this earth. Jesus had to stretch his faith out. He got his directions from heaven. Heaven told him what to do and he acted upon it. You can do the same thing if we go from glory to glory, from glory to glory. From glory to glory. See, uh, I like to see it like this. If you, there's prayers in Ephesians, and, and, and there's glory in those prayers. And, and I can start out right here, right here, but then when I activate my faith and I start believing God's word and I start seeing what he has for me, I can start getting higher in him. And then I can start confessing the word and talking about the glory and acting upon the glory, believing what he said, and I can get a higher, and I can get higher, and I can get higher. And when Satan comes to try to get me off my glory height, I tell him, no, for it is written, I'm not going to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I'm eating of the tree of life, which is my Jesus. I'm eating of that tree. When he, when he said, I can have it, I can have it. So I, I got to keep this level, and then I got to keep rising up. Anytime I feel like I'm being pushed down, I got to rise up, and I got to say, no, I'm not going there. I got to stay in my prayer place. I got to stay in my praise place. I got to stay in my worship place. I got to stay in my church. I can't talk. I can't gossip about people. I got to live the, the, the love life. I've got to walk the love life. I've got to talk the love life. I've got to be who Jesus has called me to be. And the more I get like Jesus and the closer I get to Jesus and the more I know that he is the son of God and he's full of grace, he's full of truth and the very power of God resides on him and the same power that resides on him he has brought to me because he said it pleased him to bring many sons to glory so if it pleased him to bring many sons to glory the bible says that i was created for his pleasure so if i am created for his pleasure and it pleases him to bring me to glory what should i do i keep walking in glory i keep talking in glory so what should you do i believe your assignment this sunday night is to take a hold of the word of god stretch your faith and believe for glory and don't let anybody, anybody, anything, anyone get you off. Don't let any symptom, no matter what's going on in your body or what's going on in your mind or what's going on in your family, don't let it get you off. See the answer. See the victory. And grab a hold of God's word. For it's powerful for you. And it's powerful for me. It's just how you will use it. Nick, the Lord's been showing you some things tonight about activating your faith. You've been seeing some things you should do to activate your faith. Is that right? Okay. Do it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. It's awful quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> Did I have a sermon failure or what? 
<laughs> it's so quiet. <laughs> Hallelujah. One more scripture and I'll close. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but if it's his pleasure to bring me into glory, I think I want to pleasure him. So I I've got to do something to get that. Second Corinthians. Uh, chapter 3, and I'm sure you know this. Verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed unto the same image from glory to glory. And how? Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Wow. That's heavy, isn't it? And then in verse 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us, us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. Hmm. So there's thanksgiving and glory. There's thanksgiving. There's praise. There's worship. Hallelujah. What a good God he is. How faithful and just and true he is. He's a mighty God, and it's all how you see him. Let's stand this night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how, Lord, give us all a glory trip like Donna. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my. Can you imagine just having the Lord take you? Don did that one night he, many times. Just went into that heavenly realm. Just went in there. So to get the glory, we have to know that it's a stretch of faith. Number one, we stretch our faith. Number two, we got to get to that place where he tells us to go. Whether it's a place of worship, a place of prayer, whatever it is, he tells us to do that. We got to get that. And we keep it. We keep it by not letting Satan push us down. Whenever you feel the spirit of oppression come upon you, whenever you feel a heaviness come upon you, don't let it come. You might feel it first, but you have to do something to get it off of you, and that's when you have to go from glory to glory, and you keep that spirit of oppression off of you because that's not God's best. God wants us to stand tall and be strong and be that conqueror in him. Are you ready to conquer? Who's ready to conquer? Oh, I know you are. I know you are. So let's go from glory to glory, to glory, to glory, to glory. Let's not stop. We got to go there, Kara. We can't stay here because he wants us to go there. <laughs> so I got to go there. <laughs> now look at the one next to you on each side and say, I'm going there. I think I'm going there. <laughs> I'm going from glory to glory to glory. Come on, let's do another one. I'm going. Come on, do this with me. From glory to glory to glory. Hallelujah. <laughs>